At Ash this year, what we're seeing is what I would describe as one of those years where we're seeing no brand new huge breakthrough, but we are seeing consolidation on what we already knew and some changes um, uh, in, in the ways in which some of these new agents are being offered. Now, why is that important? Well, often these, these new agents were, were so effective compared to the old treatments that the follow-up when the studies were published was very, very short. And having longer follow-up and knowing what happens to patients in longer follow-up is really important. So you could say at one level it's not new, but it's, it's hugely important information. It's important for two reasons. One, we want to know is the promise of these drugs sustained when we look over time? And secondly, we want to know for our patients is are there any new emerging side effect profiles that are, we're, that are appearing that uh, would make us worried about having patients on these drugs? And even when you've been taking a drug for a while and stop, there could potentially be later side effects that could appear. And what we've seen at this meeting is we are not seeing late emerging side effects. We've seen lots more data on the new kind of second generation agents. So acalabrutinib, xanabrutinib, phase one data on lots of other agents targeting this in a slightly different way, what we call non-covalent that are potentially over, able to overcome the resistance mechanisms. But I think what we've seen most of at this meeting is fight the more and more data combining our most effective agents together. And we are seeing a real shift internationally of people moving away from chemotherapy to chemotherapy free regimens right from up front. And when I talk to my colleagues here at this meeting, this is reinforcing that feeling that in CLL internationally, chemotherapy is a thing of the past and the novel agents are the way forward.